What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com. Today, I am back to talk Mizzou football, but this time I am joined by a very special guest. I got Eric Hobbs from Under the Arch Sports. Eric, tell everyone where they can find you and a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so Under the Arch Sports is a channel dedicated to all things revolving around the world of St. Louis sports. You know, Cardinals, Blues, Mizzou, everything, uh, you know, even SLU, the soccer team that's coming, and just anything else that happens under the arch, you know, that, you know, mm -hmm. the whole concept for the, uh, for the name was, you know, everything under the sun. Well, we talk about everything in the world of sports under the arch. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram and on YouTube, all under the arch sports. Yeah, definitely go check him out. I will link all of his stuff in the description for you guys that are interested. Uh, but all that being said, let's go ahead and get into Mizzou talk. So, Eric, after this devastating loss to the Tennessee Volunteers at home, a game in which I went to and somewhat regret it, um, Mizzou got blown out of the water by 40 points. The score was like 62 to 24. And after that game, it's got a lot of fans not only resetting expectations, but going, wait a minute, are we sure Drinkwitz is the guy? Are we sure this program is heading in the right direction? And to me, that is a little bit overblown. What would you say to those fans that are having some of those questions right now? Well, um, you know, I think the first thing you have to do is look at the talent, overall talent on the roster. And there's not much of it, to be frank. Uh, right. You look at Barry Odom's recruiting classes, and they are heinous uh, mm -hmm. in terms of ranking. And let's be real. It's reflected on the field in a lot mm -hmm. of different positions. Uh, you know, you take a look at the offensive line. You know, yeah, you got Case Cook, who's been around. But then he, him and Michael Maietti are the two offensive linemen that you feel confident about. Case Cook has been around a while, but Maietti is a grad transfer. And the other three linemen, you're kind of, eh, I hope they can hang on. Right. And they're all Odom recruits. I think yeah. that's a big issue. You take a look at the defensive line. I think there's more talent than, uh, than we've seen this season. You know, the, the defensive line is a whole, it's a, it's a story in and of itself with, how it's just collapsed. There's more talent than we've seen, but there's still not a lot of it. So I, I think you have to just look at overall roster, roster talent, understand there's not a lot of it, but reinforcements are on the way. Drink is recruiting at a level that is unprecedented in the history of Mizzou football. It's, it's just, it's going to take time for these guys to develop that first recruiting class that was so uh, kind of out of nowhere and got everyone so energized. Well, they're true freshmen. Yep. There are some of them who had, didn't even play against SEMO. So you ha it's not like basketball where two or three guys can make all the difference. This is a slow process. Yeah, you've got to give a coach, uh, especially – Drinkwitz who took over a program like Mizzou and look I don't want to act like Mizzou was this decrepit program that went two and ten before Barry Odom left but it was definitely on a downward trend when Barry Odom was on his way out um, that last recruiting class uh, that Barry Odom left that Drinkwitz technically signed it ranked in like the 50s he doesn't have a ton to work with now I, like I said on your channel like we discussed um, with resetting expectations for the season I don't want to always have to blame the talent because I feel like sometimes the talent isn't as bad as we kind of make it out to be. Like there are still some guys and I think the issues go a little bit deeper than just the talent sometimes. But if you're looking for a bright spot, it's still Steve Wilkes's first year. It's not a lot of Steve Wilkes's guys. I mean, the, he was only been here since the off season. So he hasn't even gotten a full recruiting cycle yet. And I mean, I still think they're learning his defense because you have to remember that Steve Wilkes comes from the NFL. He's a very NFL oriented guy. He hasn't coached uh, in the college ranks since what, 15, 20 years ago, something a like that. Time. Yeah. So the, the landscape of college football has changed a lot since Steve Wilkes coached. And I think Steve Wilkes is kind of learning a little bit that uh, 
maybe you have to dumb down your scheme a little bit when you're coaching college kids instead of NFL professionals. Yeah. And you know, if you, you mentioned looking at looking for positives, I, I think the first place you look when you're looking for positives is the offense. Yes. You know, I, I was talking about how the offensive line, you got two guys and then the rest are kind of, eh. well, in spite of that, the offense it's, I think the talent wise, performance wise, it is on the fringe of being a top 25 offense. I know statistically they were top 20 going into the Tennessee game. I haven't looked it up to see what they are now. I think that's a little inflated, but they're still above average. So the offense is getting there. I think, you know, there's a reason for concern when uh, Mayetti, Cook, and Beatty all leave, but you can see that there are pieces. You know, Dominic Lovett is becoming more of a factor with each passing week. Yes. And to me, he has the makings of, you know, that maybe not a first first team all SEC type receiver, but that second, third team all SEC type of receiver. I think he's got the makings of being one of those kind of guys. And you've got to have that caliber of player sprinkled you got to have four or five of those on an offense absolutely uh and the offensive recruiting has been one of the real bright spots in Drinkwitz's recruiting too uh mm -hmm. you they've recruited very well along the trenches so far they have a very good offensive line class coming in uh led by Deshaun Woods the uh best player out of the state of Nebraska four-star yeah. offensive tackle um we're looking at Luther Burden's commitment coming up here in a couple weeks and a lot of people have a pretty good feeling that he'll end up at Mizzou. That's the number one receiver in the country. You still have Mookie Cooper, who hasn't made an impact thus far, but I think a lot he's of not that, healthy. Yeah, I he's mean, just he, not healthy. He's healthy. Right. I mean, we've seen him healthy yet. Yeah, and I still think he's someone that can be a contributor in the SEC. I just think a lot of his game and his success is predicated on his speed, and he hasn't had his speed since the foot injury that he sustained, I believe it was back in fall camp, which is why he sat against Tennessee because they want to make sure he's 100% ready to go before just throwing him out there. And Drinkwitz even admitted to this point. And you know what? That's another thing I like about Drinkwitz that I'll go ahead and throw in here is that Drinkwitz is a guy that I, what I like about him is he'll admit when he messes up, uh, he'll admit, hey, I had a bad game play calling. I probably should have called the be better game. You don't hear a lot of coaches do that. And I just love the way drink takes responsibility. And to me, that is something that keeps me optimistic is that drink, which is always trying to get better himself too. Yes. No, that's always a good thing to see it. It reassures Mizzou fans that, Hey, you know what? You've got a coach that at least realizes he's not perfect. You know, so many coaches will give off the coach speak and just shrug things off. And their intention might be just to instill confidence, but they come off as just being arrogant tools who think they're too smart to possibly mess up themselves. And mm -hmm. you know, Missouri doesn't have that problem with uh, with Drinkwitz, so that that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Drinkwitz, he's one of the more honest coaches I feel like uh, around college football. Um, he's definitely someone that if you just listen to his press conferences after games, he's someone that inspires confidence. Um, I, I definitely love his personality, although we all know that by now the honeymoon has kind of ended now with Drinkwitz and people want to start seeing results. But at the same time, I think they still need to be a little bit patient. Now, we talked about how um, there's positive momentum recruiting on the offensive side of the ball, but everyone's going, where are the defensive recruits? You know, we need defense. And again, you just got to be patient. They have some good defensive prospects in this class. Um, committed so far, Marquise Gracial, um, the four-star defensive tackle. Uh, they got a couple of defensive backs committed. Uh, and then you can always hit the transfer portal. We got to look forward to that too. And uh, like you mentioned, a lot of their big recruits from their 21 class, they're only true freshmen right now. Uh, for example, the linebackers, Damon Wilson and Zachary Lovett. Um, those are two prospects I think a lot of people are excited about, but they're going to take time because linebacker is one of the hardest positions to adjust to as you go from high school to college and then college to the NFL. Um, you just, you got, you got to keep preaching, uh, preaching par patience, excuse me, fumbling with my words there. You got to keep preaching patience with this program. Uh, this is going to be a turnaround 
Um, as Barry Odom always liked to say when he was still here, it's going to be a turnaround. It's a process. Um, but I have a lot more faith in Drinkwitz with the way he's recruiting to actually turn this program around a lot more than Barry Odom did. Yeah, and I think I think you can look at three guys and have kind of a, a, a good idea of whether or not this is going to work with Drink. And uh, in this case, Wilkes with the defense. And I'm talking about Makai Wingo. I think he needs... If he's going to, uh, if this is going to work, he needs to be more of a major factor on the defensive line starting next season. Um, you know, he's a true freshman trying to play D line in the in the SEC. Mm-hmm. That that's a tough ask of anybody. Uh, but but he's played in every game. He has been, you know, gotten a lot of snaps in a couple of games. Mm-hmm. I think next season, if he is one of the guys. Uh, at defensive tackle, I think that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. And then, as you mentioned, with linebacker, uh, with uh, Wilson and Lovett, if those two, they need to be not necessarily the two starters, but they need to be factors. Mm-hmm. Because let's face it, you look at linebacker, you've got Blaze Aldridge and Devin Nicholson as your starters. Blaze Aldridge has big numbers. His overall performance is kind of Okay, Mm -hmm. Devin Nicholson is not that great. And then Chad Bailey, Jamie Petway, the backup linebackers, you almost can't afford to play them. The the, the drop-off is that drastic. So I think uh, for their – and Wilson and Lovett's second year in the program, they need to be factors. They need to be taking playing time away from them too. And if they are, that's that's a good sign. If they're not, it's a bigger bad sign, I think. Yeah, I agree. They definitely need to start showing something. And Drinkwitz's other uh, class that he'll have coming in, the 2022 class, you hope there's also a couple guys from that class that are the next Makai Wingo and they get early playing time and they can come, or the next Dominic Lovett and they come in and they make an impact early as you start to see some more of those players come in here. Uh, you just got to hope that they translate to success and they really help out this team. Uh, one more thing I'm going to go over Maybe with you. a quarterback though. who can hit a deep ball. Yeah, just definitely. Throwing yeah. Just throwing that one out there. Sam Horn. Maybe we see a little bit of him depending on what happens with Connor Baselight like, because I've been critical of him and his development as well. It seems like he's a little scared to throw the ball beyond 10 yards, but I feel like we can make a whole nother video out of that conversation. But oh, yeah. one more thing I wanted to hit on with you is um, the coaching staff beyond Drinkwitz. A lot of people are questioning Steve Wilkes, and I understand it. I've gotten to the point where I'm questioning Steve Wilkes a little bit. Uh, I always gave him a pass because of the lack of talent, but I also feel like that, again, this is a team that, yes, their talent is a little subpar compared to a lot of their opponents, but they sh- still shouldn't be getting blown off the ball uh, at on the defensive line. They shouldn't be this bad um, against the pass at times or against the run. And it's really frustrating. And a lot of people are saying, hey, maybe Steve Wilkes doesn't make it through his first year. And if he doesn't, well, then it's a bad look on Drinkwitz because, hey, he hired Steve Wilkes. This is his hand-picked guy. And if he doesn't work out, that's a bad look on Drink because then if Drink hires another guy and they don't work out, then Drinkwitz's seat starts to get hot. What do you say to the fans that uh, maybe are worried about that aspect of Drinkwitz's coaching tenure? Because his next defensive hire or his next defensive coordinator hire, assuming there is another one at some point, could make or break his time at Mizzou. Well, I think uh, the, the concern is valid. You, know, you look at the rushing def- uh, defense, it is last out of all of FBS teams mm-hmm. by a large margin. There are only three FBS teams giving up so much as 250 rushing yards a game. Um, third place, I, I forgot I forgot the, the other schools. I want to say Arkansas State and Charlotte, maybe. I might be wrong on that. Oh, uh, that are near the bottom of Mizzou, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Third I think to the worst. Last time I checked, sorry to cut you off. Last time I checked, I believe the only team they were ahead of was Miami, Ohio. So, so uh, Mizzou is dead last in rushing defense. Yeah, after their game that the they third played. worst is at 254 yards allowed. 
second to worst, 263. And then Mizzou at 308. They're giving up almost 45 yards more than any other team in the country. Mm -hmm. That is unfathomable. It's stunning. Uh, But, yeah, you know, a move has been made with uh, Jethro Franklin. We'll see. I I don't expect that there's going to be tons of improvement. Could be wrong on that. You never know. Right. But, yeah, the concern's valid just for that. But, you know, uh, on the other hand, moves were made. Um, It failed spectacularly. But Steve Wilkes tried the 3-3-5, realizing that this was for the Tennessee game, tried that 3-3-5 yes. formation, realizing that the, the run defense was a problem and that something had to be done. So it, it's it, you don't have a case of a coach being stubborn and say, they just need to learn my system and they'll get it and we just got to execute better. Right. You know, that was one of the things that used to, people just used to get sick of hearing with Gary Pinkle was, oh, we just have to execute better. We just got to play better. Well, you know what? The defense, they're making adjustments. Now, for the Tennessee game, it backfired entirely, I'd say. But yes. the, ta- the, the takeaway is they're trying, they're trying stuff. Um, so I would expect that there's going to be some new wrinkle uh, for the North Texas game. Yeah, I totally agree with you. The important thing is you're seeing them try out different stuff. I see people who, quite frankly, are uneducated. They're saying, oh, Wilkes needs to make adjustments. Wilkes needs to try something new. He is. I noticed for the um, game they played right before Tennessee, remind me what game was that, Boston College, College. he was stacking the box. He was dialing up complicated blitzes. But when your guys are straight up missing tackles, there's not much you can do as a defensive coordinator. So I – Look, I do think there's a chance Wilkes could get fired if the defense does not improve. But at the same time, I can't help but be sympathetic towards Steve Wilkes because these guys look like they've never played football before. And I can't really say that's all on Wilkes. At some point, the players got to go out there and they got to perform. I I agree. Yeah, it's most certainly. Uh, I think that's probably going to be the thing that is most closely monitored. Um, as the season progresses and go for, goes forward, they got to improve on the defensive side of the ball. And uh, if Drinkwitz does end up firing Steve Wilkes, I will say, even though it's a bad look on Drinkwitz, um, I would applaud him for being proactive and making the change because while Drinkwitz would look bad if he fires his guy only one year into his tenure, he's also going to look worse if he keeps around a defensive coordinator longer than he has to because if it's clear that Steve Wilkes isn't the guy by the end of the year and Drinkwitz still keeps him, well, then Drinkwitz only looks worse from there on. I trust him to make the right decision, um, which is also a reason I think fans should be optimistic. I mean, I Drinkwitz hasn't given you a ton of reasons to doubt him thus far since he's became the coach, and I'm going to continue to have faith in Drink. I think that's really the motto um, for fans that are a little skeptical right now, just trust and Drink. Yeah, and, and there's one thing that I think can't be overlooked is Jim Sterk is gone. Yes. The athletic director that hired Drink is gone. You know, so Coach Drink's looking at a new boss who did not bring him in. So, you know, anytime that's the case, there is an, an additional sense of urgency for a coach mm-hmm. realizing that the leash isn't necessarily as long just because you're not their guy, you know? Right. Because no AD wants to fire a guy because that's an admission that they screwed up. Yeah, I totally agree. And I didn't even really think about that to be quite honest with you. Although if we want to get technical, Drinkwitz wasn't really Sterk's hire. He was the board of curators hire, but I, I get your point. I see your point. Uh, I wanted to throw that in there, though. Uh, I definitely think we talked about everything. We hit on a lot of the uh, major um, subjects regarding this Mizzou team. Uh, So I'll go ahead and wrap it up there. I had a lot of fun talking Mizzou football with you today, though, Eric. So, again, for those of you watching, make sure you check out Eric's channel and his work over on his side. And for those of you watching, make sure you like, share, 
and subscribe so more Mizzou fans can find this. And you can also check out my work on showmefootball.com and kckingdom.com. And we'll see you all in the next one.